Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we'll see how to smell resources in Factorio. We'll start by going over the different furnaces available and what their advantages and disadvantages are. We'll then see a few different designs and how they can be upgraded. We will finish by seeing some common mistakes that can hurt your factory as well as a summary for the pollution and power consumption. Let's get started. To be able to smell resources, we first need to find resources to mine. Those resources can be found on the map for the purpose of smelting, we only are interested in coal that can be used as a fuel, stones, iron ore, and lastly, copper ore. Once those resources are found, they need to be gathered. There are different ways to do that. At the beginning, the only way would be to gather them to mine them with a pickaxe. But quickly after that, it will be possible to build burner mining drills. These drills require fuel in order to work. So once we give it fuel, it will start mining resources. Later on in the game, those drills can be switched for more advanced drills that are electric mining drills. Those drills take more space and have a larger area, cover a larger area to mine, but it will require electricity in order to be able to run. To run the burning mining drills, the fuels can be found in form of coal that can be mined or in form of trees that can be chopped. Now that the resources are gathered, they need to be smelted. It's not possible to smelt the resources manually, so for that reason, we need to use furnaces. There are three types of furnaces, but for now, let's use the most basic one, the stone furnace, in order to see the different recipes. First, this furnace requires a fuel in order to smell the resources. In this case, we will use the coal that we mined earlier. Then, we can simply place the different smelting resources into the furnace. Let's start with the stones. For the copper ore, one copper ore will produce one copper plate. Same goes for the iron ore. Furnaces don't only smelt ore, they also can smell iron plates. When doing so, they produce steel plates. To produce a single steel plate, it needs 5 iron plates, which is much more than the other resources. It also takes much longer to smelt, 16 seconds to only 3.2 seconds for the other resources. It means it consumes 5 times more resources and it takes 5 times longer to smelt steel plates. Let's now see the different furnaces available through the game. The first one is a stone furnace. It requires 5 stones to craft, which makes it very accessible early in the game and will be the first option. To run the stone furnace, we previously saw that a fuel is required. There are two types of fuel available early in the game, coal and wood. Wood can be gathered by chopping trees. It can smell just under 7 items. Coal can be mined on the map, just like ore, or it can be mined from bigger rocks. It can smell just under 13 items. Steel furnaces take as much space as stone furnaces, Hence, when upgrading from steel furnaces to stone furnaces, the steel furnace can simply be placed over the stone furnace. Similarly to the stone furnace, both wood and coal can be used as fuel. One piece of wood will produce just over 13 items, and one piece of coal will produce just over 27 items. There is an important efficiency improvement when using steel furnaces compared to stone furnaces when it comes to fuel consumption. The stone furnace is also twice as fast as smelting, meaning it will take half the time to smelt the resources. All those reasons make it interesting to upgrade to steel furnaces as soon as possible. There is a third type of furnace that needs to be covered. It is a furnace that will be available in a more advanced stage of the game it is the electric furnace. This furnace works differently. It does not require fuel to run, which can simplify the design, but it requires electricity. Therefore, a significant jump in the power consumption should be expected when upgrading to electric furnaces. Those furnaces take significantly more space. This should be taken into consideration when planning, if it is desired to upgrade to those furnaces later on. Because of this extra space taken, it is not possible to simply build an electric furnace on top of a stone or steel furnace. Electric furnaces have the same speed as the steel furnaces. However, their efficiency can be boosted in various ways using different types of modules. An easy and quick way to deliver resources to furnaces is to place them manually from the inventory. This option is time consuming and can be automated. To do so, belts and inserters need to be used. Belts will transport the resources and the inserters will move them in and out of the furnaces. But to be able to do so, the inserters require power. Therefore, power will need to be produced and delivered. 
Those tools enable for example to move ore from drills where they are mined to furnaces where they can be smelted. Here in our case we will use auto-generated resources to demonstrate this. To ensure the resources are moved in and out of the furnaces it is important the inserters are correctly placed. The arrow always points where the resource will be delivered and it has a rotation of 180 degrees. It means that if the arrow points to the right it will take the resource from the left to deliver it on the right. There are different types of belts and inserters that can be unlocked through research. The production and consumption rate is low enough to use the basic yellow inserter without any issue. The belts on the side will have a higher transport capacity meaning they'll be able to transport more items per second that will allow to place more furnaces on a single belt with more advanced belts. We've seen how to use belts, but inserters don't only work with belts, they also work with chest. It can be used as a transition solution as it decreases the manual interventions, but only belt can entirely remove them if they are set up properly. Another early solution could be to directly connect the drills to a furnace, as drills don't need inserters to move out their resources. We'll start with a simple design for the stone furnaces as they are going to be the first ones available. We'll start by building two of them side by side and put a small electric pole on each side of the furnaces. These small electric poles will be needed to deliver electricity not to the furnaces as they don't require electricity to work but for the inserters. Then we can simply copy it six times that will give us 24 stone furnaces which is only half what a yellow belt can carry. So we will duplicate this column to double the furnaces so they amount to 48. When doing so, we need to ensure there is enough space between the columns. Three will be required to fit the belt and the inserters on both sides. After that, we can start placing the belts starting with the one in the middle. We also need to place the belt on each side, so in total there will be three belts. The next step is to place the inserters. When doing so, it is important to place them in the correct way. In our case, we want them to take a resource on the left and deliver it to the right, so the arrow of the inserters points to the right. If the inserters are not well positioned, the setup will simply not work. We then need to duplicate the inserters to all our furnaces. Once the belts, the furnaces and the inserters have been placed, we need to deliver the required resources, the iron and the coal. To do so, we we'll start by placing splitters on both sides of the belt, that will split the resource evenly on both separated belts and it will feed them with half iron and half coal. That way, one side of each belt will have iron and the other one coal. That will allow us to have a single belt to deliver both resources. It is important the splitters deliver to two different belts. In our case, one goes to the left and the other one to the right. Otherwise, the throughput will be affected. Once the setup is ready, it will take a little while to have enough resources delivered to all the furnaces. But once that is done, it will place the output resource, the iron plate in our case, on the middle belt and fill it entirely generating a throughput of 15 items per second. For the second design, it is very similar, but instead of having the output resource delivered on the middle belt, it will be delivered on the right and left belts and the input resources on the middle belt. The only change that needs to be made to achieve this from the previous design is to change the rotation of the inserters. Obviously, there is now a single belt to deliver the resources, so we divided the throughput by two. It means half the furnaces will be idling compared to the previous design, and only half a yellow belt will be produced. Given the production is cut in half, the consumption of the ore and the coal will be two, but it still makes this design inefficient and is not recommended. We have seen some basic designs, so now it's time to see how to upgrade them. We will start with the first setup where the ore and coal are on the outer side of the furnaces and the output resource is in the middle. Stone furnaces can be upgraded to steel furnaces simply by placing them on top. This can be achieved because steel furnaces take the same space as stone furnaces. It makes it very easy to upgrade an existing design as there is no need to move belts or inserters. The steel furnaces are twice as fast to smell resources, meaning that if the input is not doubled, Half of the furnaces will be idling due to the lack of ore. For that reason, half the furnaces with their inserters can be removed. So from the 48 furnaces, 24 can be removed and the same throughput will be maintained. Another way to upgrade this setup is by increasing its throughput. To do so, the belt capacity will need to be increased by upgrading the belts. We'll start by upgrading to red belts that have a capacity of 30 items per second which is twice as much as the yellow belts. 
both the outer belts and the inner belt will need to be upgraded as both the consumption and the production will double. Now that the belt capacity has doubled, the production needs to be doubled as well. For that reason, an extra 24 furnaces will need to be placed with their inserters. If you are upgrading from stone furnaces to steel furnaces, an upgrade from yellow belt to red belt at the same time, there is no need to add or remove any furnace. That's because the production will double, but the capacity of the belt as well, meaning that the same amount of furnaces will consume and produce more resources. Here we can see the setup now produces 30 items per second. Another way to achieve the same throughput would be by having 96 stone furnaces and upgrading the belt to red belts. The same goes for the second design, but here we still have the same downsides, already only half the furnaces were working and that number gets even lower. There's another setup that we have not seen yet and it includes electric furnaces. Those furnaces are available later in the game and take more space hence why the design is going to be slightly different. We'll start by placing two furnaces side by side and then two electric poles. We'll then place 12 of them on a single column. After that, we'll place the inserters to move the resources in and out of those furnaces. Then we will duplicate this column of furnaces to have 24 of them. There'll need to be one space in the middle to place the belt. The outer belts will also need to be placed. In this design, the ore is going to be on the outer belts and the smelted resource on the middle belt as it's more efficient. Splitters are no longer needed because electric furnaces do not require fuel to run as they run with electricity. It also means the belts carry more resources, so more iron ore in this case. This setup results in two outcomes. 24 furnaces are insufficient to process all the incoming resources and the middle belt lacks the capacity to transport the double volume of smelted material. Upgrading belts becomes challenging since doubling the current input would produce 60 items per second, exceeding the capacity of any available belt. To keep the same belt for both input and output, a single column of furnaces should be used for those belts. However, this will create another problem, as now all the resources produced end up on the same side of the belt, causing the belt to use only half of its transport capacity. To fix this problem, we need to invert the direction of the belt for half of the furnaces, 12 in this case. A common mistake is to run out of material to craft the desired resources. When this happens, it will stop producing resources also affecting other production lines based on that resource. Similarly, running out of fuel will have the same effect. Another mistake to avoid is to mix the fuel and the material on both sides of the belt. The fuel is consumed at a much lower pace than the material meaning the material will stop going to the end of the belt and some furnaces will start idling. Here is a summary of the different furnaces required for the different belts. Here is a summary of the total pollution produced by the different furnaces regarding the different belts. And finally, here is a summary of the power consumption where stone and steel furnaces use fuel to consume power.